gal? It's Chelsea, and welcome to what will hopefully be my Spookopoly vlog. And Jess. Hi, what peeps. Up? So, I did my first roll this morning, which you will not see any of my rolls, because in this house we use what we have, and I film on my phone, and I am playing Spookopoly on my phone. I so, <laughs> so, I rolled a 10 this morning, and that is Feed Scroll. Um, I was very upset by this because I did have a conversation with the board. I said we are not rereading books for prompts and we are only reading from my physical TBR. Uh, and the board was like, <laughs> bitch, you're going to read what I tell you to read. So feed scroll is you basically pick the app of your choice and you just you scroll through until you find a book you own or you want to read, blah, 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 what have you. So I'm on Instagram for what feels like three and a half eternities and I'm getting nothing. Okay, so I moved to Goodreads. I'm like, I should have better luck on Goodreads. It's the book app. So I'm scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and I've got nothing. Then I finally found Sour Candy. Uh, the board is still besting me because this isn't my book. It's Beeb's book, but she wanted me to read it already and it's super short. So who's winning now, board? Who's winning now? Um, it is October 1st. I've got my spooky clothes on, but this is San Antonio. It's going to be in the 90s today, so I don't know how long this is going to last. <laughs> Beebs and I have some errands to run. She is screaming at me, so I'm just going to take y'all with me. Not okay. So I'm at Barnes & Noble, and I wore my little spider earrings to manifest uh, the Beholder release because today's the first but Beholder comes out on the third uh, so I came here and I came to look to see if they have it early they have it early Day two of Spookopoly. Don't mind the light. It is 5.30 in the morning. This is just, this is just how it goes. So as you would have seen, last night I did finish Sour Candy. I gave this two stars. I feel like I start every reading month out with a two star. In this book's defense, this isn't something I really wanted to read. This wasn't off of my physical TBR like I wanted. This is a book that Biebs owns. She really liked it. She wanted me to read it, but I just, I wasn't particularly drawn to it. This book is 73 pages, so that already had me hesitant. Short stories and novellas typically are not my thing. Just, they always feel choppy and unfinished. It is hard for me to find one that I feel is fully fleshed out. And this one didn't do that for me. Uh, this takes place over like a span of four months. So I felt like it was very like we, we were skipping a lot of time, which I guess in the grand scheme of things is, is fine. Like, I don't want to go too much into the synopsis of this because, again, it's only like 70 pages. I don't know at this point what would be considered a spoiler or not. And as someone who goes into everything blind, I kind of view everything as a spoiler. I, I really didn't like the way that this author writes. Like I, I felt like it was trying too hard with some of the vocabulary and that just kind of irked me. Um, and again, like the choppiness of it, which I, I blame on the length. I feel like if this was a little bit longer, that probably would have been solved. But I don't think I would have liked the writing regardless. I, I still found myself skimming this. 70 pages, wanting to skim. So it, it, was, kind of, it was kind of rough. I would kind of pitch this as Goosebumps, but for adults. So like if you were really into Goosebumps as a kid... And like you read the shit out of those books and you liked, you know, just the small, weird stories. And if you're kind of looking for that as an adult, this one might be it. Like I can find myself recommending this to people in the future. Just I personally didn't like it. I did do my second roll. 
I rolled a five. Uh, that puts me at the first Taylor Swift space, Are We Out of the Woods Yet? Which is basically just read a book that has woods. Since today is Monday and I'm back at work, I, I really needed to find an audiobook. I typically only read audiobooks during the week. Thankfully, 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 I was able to use Graceling for this prompt. These are the newer covers um, and you can clearly see, well, I don't know if you can clearly see, it's dark, but there, there's obviously woods on this cover. I don't know anything about this other than the fact that it's like an OG YA. People are still reading them years later and saying that they still hold up, but they're still a fun time. I found this for super cheap, so if it's not a win, I'm not going to be mad at it. And I'll be listening to it on audio, so it's only going to take up about six hours of my time. I am bringing my dice to work with me today, so around lunchtime when I finish this, I can, I can roll again and hopefully we can reconvene. Hello! It is Tuesday after work. And I am just apologizing once again that during the work week, this is the view we get. This is the look we get. It is what it is. I, I can't vlog at work. I just, I can't do it. But I've got updates for you. All right. So I read Graceling. I gave it two stars. Um, so we're, we're two for two. Two books, two stars. Awesome. Awesome. That's on brand for me. I'm not mad about this one, though. This is not a hateful two star by any means. This is a debut YA fantasy published in 2008. Okay, the bar was on the floor. In fact, there was not even a bar. I figured it was probably going to miss. But sometimes, you know, there there's a gem amongst the junk. At the end of the day, I don't I don't fault this book but it is very poorly written and it is extremely, extremely dramatic. And the audiobook that I had uh, was not doing the book any favors. It played really dramatic music. Thieves called and I got interrupted. It, the audiobook plays incredibly dramatic music at the end of every single scene. Like, I'm not talking about like at the end of every chapter. Every time there is a page break, there's music playing and it corresponds to like the vibe of the scene. So if it's like a really like happy scene uh, and there's a page break, it'll go. La, 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 la. And if it's like a super dramatic scene, leaving you on a cliffhanger type thing. Dun, 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 dun. Like it, <laughs> it's so bad that it's funny, but it it's bad. I don't know. And I feel like like it, this is a two star. I will be unhauling this. I don't think I'll reread it. But I feel like in the future, if I ever become desperate for audiobooks, I may continue with the series. And I say that just because I know that there are newer books in this series that have been published like way more recently. So I, I'm not going to lie. Like I'm kind of intrigued just to see like the difference between the latest release and this one. But this will purely be audio. This will purely be from the library. This will purely be if they're available and I literally have nothing else to listen to. And it does happen sometimes. So like I'm leaving that door open, but I don't plan on coming back to it like anytime soon. Um, I feel like this is the most joyous two star I've probably ever given just because like I'm not mad about it. I did have it on three times speed. I didn't hate listening to it. It was just kind of on and I was laughing about it all day. I was finished with it by lunchtime. I only spent like four dollars on this. Like I it's fine. I tried it and now I know. I did my next roll. I think I rolled a five and I landed on the Daphne de Maurier however you say her name, I landed on that space. Um, I'm not going to lie. This was one of the like two or three spaces I did not want to land on. And that's mostly because I'm trying to primarily read from my own physical TBR. And I don't, first of all, I don't own Rebecca and I don't really own many Gothic books. So I was sitting there during my lunch break trying to figure out what I was going to read. And I was like, you know what? Like we're at the beginning of the work week. It's going to be a long month. Fuck it. I went on to my Libby app and they had a copy of Rebecca available. I've never read it. 
So I was like, you know what? We're just going to do it. Here is, here is my chance. I was not anticipating reading it. I was not anticipating really landing on this space. I was just hoping that I would just keep skipping right over it. But the board is trying to best me. We are having conversations. So I started Rebecca and I, I learned something about myself today. <laughs> my sense of humor is, is very odd and very dry. I went into Daphne completely blind. Like the only thing I know about this book is that it's a classic and it's considered gothic fiction. I know nothing. I know nothing about the plot. I, I, I know nothing. Like that was literally it. I had the title. I had gothic and I had classic. That, that was all I had to go off of. So I'm just like, okay, like, you know, when I think gothic, I, I think ooky, spooky manners and tons of lush description and gloomy weather, you know, like the vibes. And then classics, they, they can go one of two ways. Like they're either a fun time or they're like really dense and like kind of hard to follow and like weird word choices are used. About I'm about 20% in to Rebecca. I didn't get very far. And I learned that because of my humor, like in this instance, because of my humor, I don't feel like I'm reading the same book as everyone else has. Because to me, at least 20% in, Rebecca is not a gothic novel. Rebecca is a comedy. <laughs> I had to turn this off during my shift because I was laughing so loudly that like I felt like I was distracting the other people I work with. Because I work in a warehouse with three other people, one of whom was absent today, and we work in complete silence. So it's just like us in our own little head and then just me over in the corner fucking cackling. So I ended up turning it off. I needed to write things down as I was going because there was just so many things <laughs> that I wanted to tell you. So um, basically what I'm gathering so far from this book is our main character ends up marrying this man who has already been married before, but the wife died. The, the wife is Rebecca. Um, so she goes and lives with him on his estate or whatever. And it's like the, the deceased wife is present everywhere still. But I stand by the fact that this book, at least so far, is a comedy so like right off the bat, like very early in the book, the main character is describing somebody and she says, their forehead was as bare as a schoolboy's knee. <laughs> and honestly, I was sold after that. I knew that I was probably going to enjoy this book because to me, that was hilarious. He's um, going for a ride with the dude, right? And a comment is made about her age because she's like on the younger side. Honestly, I don't know how old she is. I don't know how old he is either, but she's on the younger side. She's much younger than him. And a comment about that is made. And she's just sitting there and she goes, oh, I wish I was 36. And the dude was like, well, if you were, you wouldn't be in my car. And I was like, dang, what a fucking dick. Like, this dude is a dick. Okay. Like, I hate him. Like, I get for, like, the time period, like, I understand why he's a dick. But holy shit, he's a dick. So, like, this this girl, she has some sort of job or something. Like, she, she watches over or takes care of, like, this woman or something. And this woman's moving to New York. So she tells the dude, she's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm going to have to move to New York. Like, I don't want to, but, like, who's going to watch out for her? And he's like, that's nonsense. You'll just marry me. And she's like, what? Like, cause that, that's like literally, that's like literally how the conversation goes. She's like, oh, that's nonsense. You'll just marry me instead. So she's just like, what? What are you talking about? And this dude like automatically turns around and she, he's just like, oh, you're so ignorant and unintelligent. And I'm just like, dude, like you, you just shittily proposed to this woman and then the very next words out of your mouth are you telling her that she's ignorant and unintelligent, which like isn't a total lie, but like, damn, 
damn. So like he says that and I'm just like, holy shit. And he keeps on talking and he's like, oh, that, that was kind of rude of me. You probably wanted a more traditional proposal. You know, we can just, what, what was it? We can make violent love behind a tree while a violin plays. And I'm like, excuse me? Violent? I can't just it's so good and I don't know if it's good because like it's it's like a genuinely a good book or if I think it's good just because I think it's so fucking hilarious and like all these characters are so blunt like they they will just say whatever and there's this part where somebody puts puts on some music and the the main character is she she then says that like someone someone in the room starts bouncing their shoulders up and down. So it's like they're just dancing with their shoulders. So all I could think of was some music playing and someone just going. <laughs> I fucking died. The exclamations these people make instead of just like, oh my God, or what the fuck? Like normal people say, like when they're exclaiming something, somebody said, what in the name of Mike are you doing? <laughs> I'm just like, who the fuck is Mike? Just the types of vocabulary that's used in the descriptions. It is so funny. Charles. So like the, the dude's in her room or whatever, and they're like having some sort of conversation. He's like kind of just nosing through all of her stuff. And he's like opening up her drawers and looking at her. I don't know why. Like I, he just is. And the, the main character describes it as, oh, he was fingering my clothing. And I was just like, ew, sentimental image of this dude, like, in a drawer, just, like, going like this to her clothes. <laughs> so it could very much just be me and my sense of humor. But, like, so far this book is fucking hilarious. Like, now that they're actually in the house, um, I'm starting to see, like, more of the the mystery, like, um of how the the other woman like really died like did she really drown was it foul play so like there's that whole aspect of it and there is definitely more gothic descriptions now that they're in the actual space um so i understand why it's a gothic novel but holy shit that first 20 percent hilarious top tier comedy I love it. Happy October 3rd from me and Sleeping Pua. <laughs> Don't ask me what that was. Y'all, I am so tired. Like, so tired. I haven't slept in two nights. I just lay there with my eyes closed for seven or eight hours. And then I get back up and start my day again. It's really starting to hit me. I'm so tired. Like, I can barely keep my eyes open. Look at me. <laughs> One of the things I love and hate about Spookopoly, or, or I guess just not Spookopoly, but Betha Spookopoly in general, is that I always land on the spaces I don't want to land on. Um, the board always tries to best me every time. It, it's like one hit after another. Um, and this round is no different. Um, I probably never would have picked up Rebecca on my own if it wasn't for landing on that space. And I finished it today and I gave it five stars. I had way too much fun with that book to give it anything less. It is a five star. I loved it. I loved it so much. Um, I will say the from when I updated you last... It did get more gothic-y and less, like, cackling laughter, but there still was a lot of that. Um, I, I can't go into any of the specifics because I don't, I don't want to get too spoilery, but just know there are things. Um, and I do feel personally attacked that nobody told me this book was gay. Like, there is nothing I... Something I've learned, I feel like this year specifically, is there's nothing I love more than a gay classic. I, the gay undertones, but they were like real, like, 
blatantly in your face with this one I feel and I was here for it I loved it I oh god I loved it it was so good and that ending I loved the ending like that ending was badass I thought I just I loved it it gave me chills like I was just like oh get them <laughs> It was so good. I, I had a great time. I need a physical copy like right now. I did another roll at lunch. And speaking of the board always trying to best me, I rolled my first double of the month. It, it, I'm sorry, it's too early in the month for doubles. Um, since I'm rolling as I go, I just decided to roll twice. Um, so the first prompt that I got was pumpkin spice which is to read a book with spiciness in it. Um, since it is the week still, it is still the work week, I'm trying to utilize the audiobooks that I have available as much as I can. Um, so I went with Mortal Follies by Alexis Hall. Uh, this was a gift from my friend Destiny. Thank you so much, Destiny. This is sapphic, uh, which is really all I needed to know. Um, it is... It's like a, it's essentially a Regency romance, but everyone is openly gay and there's magic and gods. So like the premise is there. I don't really like gods and like mythology and stuff like that. So that aspect is really not hitting for me, but I knew that going in. And like this story is narrated um, from like a, what, what is, what is she? a sprite or some sort of mythical creature telling the story. I don't know. It That's not really doing anything for me either. Um, I'm about halfway in. I, I think I'm about either 55 or 60% in. And this will be a three star tops. Like, I don't think that it's a bad book. It's just not for me. The relationship between the two women, like, I am not invested in them at all. I don't see any chemistry with them at all, which I found quite, quite shocking after reading boyfriend material and just becoming obsessed with those characters and their relationship and just shipping them so hard. I don't have any of that in this. Um, and about halfway in, I feel like the, the major plot point of the book has already been resolved so like even leading up to the halfway point like this is not an incredibly long book it's less than 400 pages um but it already feels too long and i feel like the main conflict has already been resolved halfway in so now i just feel like it's dragging i don't know in terms of spice there's some spicy language but I can already tell that nothing spicy is going to happen until like the end. But judging on the way that these girls talk to each other, I expect to get at least one legitimate spicy scene. Is this being a sapphic romance was spicy enough for me? And so to me, that feels the prompt. The second prompt I got was Michael Myers, which is to read a sequel. Um, and again, utilizing the audiobooks, I think I'm going to go with the next Game of Thrones book. Um, I'm reading this series for the first time still. I started it years ago. It's just, it, it takes me forever to get through. I enjoy them when I'm in them, but it just, it takes a lot for me to pick one up. And I've renewed the audio for book three, I want to say three or four times now. So I figured this was the perfect opportunity to pick it up. The only thing is... That audiobook is like 48 hours long. And I mean, I typically listen to everything on two times speed. I think I got through the other two Game of Thrones books on two times speed. Um, but even at two times speed, that's still 24 hours. Um, so yeah, I'm used to averaging a book a day. So just being in that book constantly you know, for at least 24 straight hours. Like, I don't know. We'll see that. But that's probably what I'm going to pick because that's a sequel that I have on audio. And I still, I have to work the rest of the week still. So it will, it will get listened to. <laughs> uh, and that's all I have for today. 
Um, again, I apologize for like lack of B-roll and aesthetics. Like the work week, I am basically just a goblin monster and I'm either sitting in this chair in my bed or I'm at work. Like I don't, the work weeks are very boring. They're very boring. <laughs> I'm sorry. Tell them. Tell them, Soup. Why are you so mad, Soup? You mad? She's pissed off because she wants to snuggle. Tell him, babe. Well, <laughs> they don't call me Chelsea Two Star for nothing. That's right. Mortar Follies, two stars. Like I said yesterday, I could tell almost immediately that this wasn't going to be like a raging success for me, which was fine. But up until about 50, 60 percent, it was sitting at a three star and I, I was fine with that. My issues with this book is the main conflict I felt was resolved at the halfway mark. So I was like, oh, OK, we're probably getting to, you know, that that third act breakup that's always in like romance books you know, some sort of conflict, blah, blah, blah. And then I looked to see how much of the audiobook I had left and I still had half the fucking book. So I just kind of felt like the last half, they just kind of meandered. Like this other thing happens where it's like, oh, what was resolved at the 50% mark wasn't wasn't really the thing. It It's this. And they just kind of like fucked around for the rest of the book. Um... I can confirm this book is not spicy. Um, like I had said, I, I don't I don't see the chemistry with these characters at all. Like I I don't just they're just there. Uh, they're just kind of shoved together because the author wanted them to be shoved together. Like I they I to me they have no chemistry. Um, but the way that they talk to each other through this entire book led me to believe that we were going to get at least one spicy scene. Like they are literally constantly, every conversation they have with one another, it's, oh, I want you to fuck me. Oh, I'm going to fuck you. Like those are their words, not mine. They are dropping F-bombs left and right. So I was just like, okay, okay. Like, mm-hmm, this going to be spicy as fuck if this is how they're talking to each other just, you know, in the middle of the plaza. You know what I mean? Uh, but no, um, I I wouldn't even call it fade to black because like just, just nothing. There, there'll be like one sentence to imply that they did the deed and then that's it. They just move on about their business. And I was like, really, really? You're going to have them talk to each other like that and you're just going to. And judging by the price of this paperback, this is an adult novel. So... I don't know that not that I, I need spiciness in my books, but just off of the way that they were speaking to each other, like I really thought that we were going to get something and see, OK, this is my thing with sapphic romances. A lot of them I don't like or a lot of them I think they're just average because stuff like this always happens like they're, I just feel like they're not well written. But I don't, I don't understand why it's so hard to write a really good romance between two women. Because this isn't the first instance. I, I read One Last Stop and didn't really care for that one that much in comparison to Red, White, and Royal Blue. I read Delilah Green Doesn't Care. I think that's what it's called. And I didn't really care for that one either. It's like, where are the really good sapphic books? Please, for the love of God, leave me some recommendations in the comments because th this is this is not it. Those books aren't it. So I picked up the next Game of Thrones book because I already had the audio. I made it. It's it's a forty eight hour audio book, y'all. Forty eight hours. I'm the audiobook queen, but even a forty eight hour audio book is gonna take me a minute. Um, I got through fifteen hours of it today at work. Uh, if I did my math right, I'm not good at math, by the way. If I did my math right, if I listen to nothing else but this book, I can finish it Friday morning, which is fine. But I also have Mistborn on audio. 
um, and that's due back in like two days and I can't renew it. I'd have to put another hold on it and I don't, I don't want to do that because the holds through the San Antonio libraries take forever. They take forever. So I need to knock it out. So I'm probably going to finish that one tomorrow and then go back to Game of Thrones. So I don't know when I'm going to roll again. Hello. I know we haven't talked in a couple of days, but my dad just came and pulled out the rest of the carpet in my house. And I am so excited that I don't have to pull up this tile. It is in good enough shape where even though it's ugly, it can just stay, which has shaved off hours off of this project. So I can just pull up the tack strip nice and easy and mop it up done. Oh. Well, we've, we're wrapping up week one of Spookopoly. Um, it's Sunday today. I have, I talked to y'all for like a second yesterday, um, but I haven't done any reading updates since Wednesday, I think. Um, Thursday, <laughs> Thursday was a bad day. We're not going to talk about Thursday. Friday was a busy day. <laughs> We're not going to talk about Friday either, other than the fact that I did finish Mistborn. Um, I didn't read this for Spookopoly, that, though technically I could have worked it into the Michael Myers prompt that I'm currently working on because I'm reading the Cosmere in order. So this would technically be considered part of a series um, because I read Elantris first, uh, but I'm not going to do that because I did already start the Game of Thrones book. Um, so I just, I read this one because my audiobook loan was about to expire and I was not waiting for this book to come in again because it's like always on hold. Um, I gave this three stars. I thought it was fine. Uh, I do think that it laid a really good foundation for this world to expand the way that it has. So I'm very excited to get into the rest of it. But this one was just a three star. I'm going to hold on to it, especially because like I have this really awesome hardback. Um, so we're just going to continue on for a while and and see where we're at from there. So, I mean, it was fine, but I didn't feel blown away. In terms of Game of Thrones, I think I'm about at the halfway mark now or over the halfway mark. I know I have it on 2.75 speed. Um, and at that speed, I have 10 hours left. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's a long one. It's a long one. Um, yeah, this weekend was, was really busy. We did a lot of home renovation. We did a lot of errands, chores, catching up on things. And honestly, I just didn't feel the need to vlog any of it. I was busy doing the thing. Uh, it is not a read Chelsea read vlog unless it falls apart at the end. Um, please give this video a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And please, as always, talk to me down in the comments. I love talking to y'all down there. That's like one of my favorite parts of doing this is just interacting with everybody down in the comments. Okay, bye.